Hey there, welcome to the Common Climber YouTube channel and our three-part video series on rope specs and UIAA standards. This is part two of a three-part series on rope specs to help you buy a new rope. Part one, if you haven't seen it yet, talks about middle markers, the rope sheath, and the diameter. In this section, we're talking about falls and Vector 2 falls. And then in part three, we discuss impact force, dynamic and static elongation, weight, and length. All right, let's dig into falls and factor two falls. The UIAA uh, has specific tests and criteria for a rope to be approved. The UIAA protocol uh, tests for the most extreme form of a fall, which is called the factor two fall. For single dynamic ropes, the UIAA test drops an 80 kilogram weight, which is about 176 pounds, for a factor two fall. And they do this a minimum of five times in a row. And they don't allow the rope to rest in between the falls. Now, doing this, having these standards, builds a lot of safety margins in for the rope, which, hey, can't argue with that, it's a good thing. But it does leave us wondering, how does this really apply to real life? Well, it actually doesn't translate that well, and I'll get into that a bit later. But to understand why it doesn't translate that well, it first helps to understand what a factor two fall is. Factor two falls are actually rarely achieved in real life scenarios. But I'm gonna go ahead and tell you how they're calculated since you probably hear a lot about them. Basically, you take the length of the fall and you divide it by the length of the rope that is out. So let's say you're on a climb and 30 feet of rope is out. And then you're getting ready to clip the chains and you end up taking a whipper of about 10 feet. So you're gonna divide 10 feet, the length of the fall, by the length of the rope that is out, which is 30 feet, and your fall factor is gonna be 0.33. Now, let's compare this to, let's say you're on a 70 foot climb, you're about ready to clip the chains. Um, you've got 70 feet of rope out, you do a 10 foot fall. That fall factor is 0 0.14. Yeah, fair amount less. And this is because there's more of the secured rope out on the belay side when I say secured, like clipped in to carabiners, um, draws, on the belay side to absorb the energy of the fall. So kind of think of the rope that's out on the climber's unprotected side as loose. Of course, a bigger fall is gonna result in a bigger fall factor when there's less rope out on the secured belay side. Let's go back to our 30 foot climb example. So let's say, 30 feet of rope is out and you fall 20 feet, the fall factor is now 0.66. Because there is really only 20 feet of secured rope that's catching the fall. Now remember that the fall distance is twice the length of the amount of the unsecured or loose rope. When you do a 20 foot fall and there's 70 feet of rope out, um, the, the fall factor is 0 0.29. Now you can see all of these numbers are below even one, right? So how do you get to a fall factor of two? Well, you actually have to fall below the belayer for that to happen. And this is why I say in reality, factor two falls don't happen very frequently. The scenario where you could see that happening would be in multi-pitch climbing, you're early on in the climb and um, you ha don't have any protection in and you take a fall and you fall below your belayer. Now keep in mind, the other part of reality that will reduce the fall factor is the absorption of the fall by the belayer. In a multi-pitch scenario, this energy absorption will be less compared to a belayer jumping or being pulled off the ground and this is because the belayer is attached to the wall. But even then, the belayer will absorb some of the energy of the fall. Now that we know what factor two falls are, 
and how they're achieved, the rope specs are going to tell you how many of those types of falls occurred before rope failure in the testing process. And what they mean by rope failure is loss of shock absorption properties. It doesn't necessarily mean the rope breaks. Here, um, looking back at the label, you can see that the fix Suriana uh, successfully had seven factor two falls before losing its shock absorption properties. And um, the UIAA minimum is five. So how does this apply to real life? In terms of buying a rope, Frankly, the other factors that we discuss in our part one and part three rope specs videos are much more important. All UIAA approved ropes are going to be solid in this area. Basically, the most important thing that you can do related to falls and ropes is to frequently check your rope. Check for changes in the core, like does the rope feel compressed, bulgy, or wonky in a section, or is the outer sheath fraying and worn? If your rope has any of these things, then it's time to retire it. That wraps up part two of our rope specs video on falls and factor two falls. If you want to learn more about the other features of ropes to consider when buying, check out part one of our video where we talk about middle markers, the sheath, and the rope diameter. Our last video in the series hits on impact force, dynamic and static elongation, and weight and length. Thanks for checking out the Common Climber YouTube channel. If you learned a little something today, there's a super simple way to help us out. Like this video and subscribe to our channel. If you want more sweet and unique climbing content, check out our online magazine at commonclimber.com.